this is Emily Kennison, and today I'm doing a book review on the book called The Three Little Pigs by David Weissner. Now, David Weissner is also the illustrator. This book was published in Clarion, New York in 2001, and this book, as you can see by the emblem, won a 2002 Caldecott Award winner. And this book is considered a picture book, as one can see. There are many pictures. And the book is also considered a fiction, as well as based on the old fairy tale, The Three Little Pigs. So as a quick summary of this book, The Three Little Pigs start off in their original story. You know, the big bad wolf is coming in and the, trying to blow all their houses down. Instead of the story continuing, the three little pigs end up leaving their story and end up in an alternate universe. In this alternate universe, the three pigs have destroyed their story trying to escape it. They've even taken their story and crumpled it up and used it as a paper airplane. And they fly through this universe and they find all these different other stories, these other panels of literary stories, and they decide to jump in and see what's going on. They're really curious. And they end up in stories like Hey Diddle Diddle and Her Dragon to Slay Dragon Guard. And they end up bringing other friends out of these stories, such as the cat and the fiddle from Hey Diddle Diddle and the dragon from Her Dragon to Slay Dragon Guard. They end up getting tired of this alternate universe and they decide to pick up the pieces of their story and decide to put the panels back up. But the dragon appears in their story and messes up all the text so no one can read the story anymore. So they have to fix the text, but they still decide to let the cat, the fiddle, and the dragon come into their home and eat soup together. Of course, the big bad wolf is pretty scared seeing a big dragon show up in the middle of their story. So beyond the text, the text summary, there's a lot of illustrations that need to be explained. So I'm going to do a illustration synopsis. So, in the illustrations, there are a total of three styles that are used, and the first one is considered cartoon. So, it's really pretty obvious to see this cartoon in the Three Little Pigs story. The cartoon style is pretty easy to see. You see the big black bold lines across the characters. Um, it's very easy to see it's bold. The next part um, or the next style that is seen in this text is realism. So realism is quite greatly used here because they use it when the pigs leave the story. So they're no longer cartoon, but they're now realistic pigs. So one can see that this is pretty realistic here. The pig snouts and mouth and ears and tail are very realistic to an actual pig. You can even see the individual hairs in the pig. Even the cat later on in the story has individual hairs that one can see. It looks like an actual cat, you know, realistic whiskers and ears and claws, um, you know, realistic fe features on the cat. Beyond that is expressionism that you can see throughout the entire story. So expressionism is where the characters show their expression. It's easier for readers to actually see how the pigs and the and all the other characters feel at the time. So the example here, you can see that he's kind of scared, a little frightened, uh, surprised that he's hitting all these different panels. So you can see expressionism throughout the entire story. There are many different artistic mediums that are used throughout the story. Particularly one can find out what, what mediums are used in the book jacket cover here. It says what is used is watercolor, gouache, colored inks, pencil, and colored pens, and colored pencils. So, it's pretty obvious to see that, like, in the Three Little Pigs story, that watercolor is used. It's light. It's delicate. Gouache is used for the clouds. The clouds are chalky, more uh, fuzzy than watercolor. Um... There's very particular areas in the story of which you can see pen being used, uh, co the colored pens. 
and that is in the pigs. As you can see with the pigs, you can see the strokes of the pen. You can see the different colors. Um, particularly with pencil, is only used one time within through the entire story. And that is when they end up, um, not pen, but pencil, um, here and when they're in the book, Her Dragon Slay Dragon Guard. The big deal with this one is you can see that it's in pencil. There's no colors. It looks like pencil. So you can see that all the different types of styles are used. Now, throughout the story, the position of the text and where the illustrations are change. So in The Three Little Pigs, most pages have two to three illustrations per page, sometimes one, like in the very beginning. But they're little rectangular panels of different illustrations. And the text is always black and at the top center of the illustrations. Once as the pigs leave the story, if you've noticed through some of the pictures I've shown, it turns completely white. There's no illustrations, hardly, like it's not filling up the whole page. There's this big white space, which represents an alternate universe. And the text is within speech bubbles for the pigs. And the illustrations are spanning one illustration per two pages, not just a bunch in one page. This could be a symbolic representation of saying, well, the pigs can no longer be contained in their own story. Rather, they're out in this own world. When they see the particular stories, the stories change. With Hey Diddle Diddle, the border around the story is no longer rectangular. It is an oval faded shape, and the colors are brighter. While in Her Dragon Slay Dragon Guard, there's multiple illustrations per page. There's a little line border around it, and it's all in pencil. There's no color. This could be the original illustrations of the original texts, which shows that the pigs are going into and out of these literary texts. And towards the end of the story, when they end up back into the story, their own story, The Three Little Pigs, the text is all over the place showing that they've hit it, and the illustrations as they come up from the floor, the, you know, the, they're flat now, instead of 2D, they're flat on the white floor when they knocked it over, they put them back up, and their text is all over the white area, it's all over the illustrations, they fix it. As the pigs are fixing it in the very last panel, the last panel, uh, or the last page, has one illustration showing that the, the pigs are back in their story and they have fixed their text, but it's all mismatched, it's uneven, realizing that the pigs, although they're in their own story, are now controlling their story and what's going on. So past the illustrations, I'm going to talk about one particular literary element in the story, which is the fact that the pigs are dynamic round characters. Now, other people can argue otherwise, but being dynamic means that their characters are well-developed, and you can see that past their own story. In their original story, they're just like frightened pigs, afraid of the big bad wolf, but now they are curious. They're wanting to know what world they're in. They're very playful and in innovative. You know, they end up using their own story as paper airplanes, which is pretty cool. Um, then they um, also are considered clumsy. There's one pig that keeps hitting the panels over, and that's pretty funny as a comedic side note. So these pigs do have a personality past their story. They're considered, so that's what is considered when they're considered round characters. They're well-developed. With being dynamic, um, they seem to... Uh, change throughout the story. At first, they're stuck in their own story. Now they are at the very end of their story. Having a well-developed personality, controlling their own story, wanting to write their own story, being friends with other people besides just knowing themselves and the big bad wolf. Other people can argue that they're flat and static characters just because of the fact that um, they are not particularly changing. Like, they could be better, but a lot of people could argue it's round and dynamic. So, with the critical evaluation of this text, um, 
what you can see here is that for younger readers, because this is for pre-K through second grade levels, for younger readers, understanding how characters can leave their story and be an alternate universe can be very hard considering a lot of students, uh, especially according to many developmentalist models, say they can have problems with understanding something as a an abstract of a uh, particular storyline. Past that is the idea that the story such as Hey Diddle Diddle and Her Dragon Slay Dragon Guard may not be commonly known uh, to other students in your classroom or just children in general. Um, it depends on the culture they grow up in, if it's universal or not. It depends on their family or parents if they even read so to them. So you have to consider that because then they won't even understand the plot line, which is the fact they're going into different stories. But the good thing about this text is the artistic styles and mediums. As I've mentioned before, when they're leaving their story into the alternate universe, it goes from this 2D cartoon world to a 3D realistic world, which is easy for um, the readers to understand. The idea is that the text moves, it's easy to read, and the different stories used have different borders and different colors, as I've mentioned before, which can make it more obvious to reader, readers that they are in different stories. So the artistic styles and mediums are very great, and with enough valuation and ex explanation with your students, they can understand the story more. So going from that idea to a teaching idea, the idea is for younger students, so for that pre-K, kindergarten level, you can bring in materials and have them make the houses, you know, the straw and the brick houses that the three little pigs build and see if they fall down um, in the story, which can be more used for the original, but you can still use it here because it's brought up. Um, you can do that with older students as well. Um, for first, second graders, you can do a close read and chunk read. So you can talk about a lot of different vocabulary, uh, literary vocabulary in here. You know, talk about main characters, plot, theme. You can talk about all those different types of vocabulary. And for second graders particularly, uh, one of their curriculum um, standards is using graphic organizing, being able to compare uh, and contrast two different stories. So you can use the original Three Little Pigs and have them compare this story to that one, see the differences and similarities. There's other Three Little Pigs knockoffs or, you know, um, just different Three Little Pig versions that you can use. You can compare those to this one. You can use a summative assessment there uh, where they can do that on their own, which is you can get them to compare and contrast a lot of these books. You can have them do a set on their own. So you use this one and compare it to another. Um, and that can be turned into a whole thematic unit. So thanks for watching. Please like and comment down below and tell me um, if you like the video, what you would want to see or what you would want to be added. Um, the next video I will be creating will be on Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. So if you're interested in that, please watch that video.